recording. Excellent. All right. So I guess we'll uh, we'll open the meeting at 7.02. Um, is there anything we need to do for the select board to open their meeting as well? Or is it nothing? Okay. <laughs> so um, our... Uh, oh. I, would, I would actually suggest that, Chris, Chris, if you could just call your meeting to order, just generally, okay. since you have a quorum. Call the meeting to order at 7.03. All right. Excellent. So on the... Uh, Traffic Safety Advisory Committee's uh, agenda tonight. Uh, we actually have two items and we're only going to complete one as we don't have any minutes to go over. Um, is an overview on the grant the town received for the shared streets and spaces program. Um, so what I'd like to do is explain a little bit about what the program is. Um, start to talk about why we applied for it. Um, and then go into a little bit of, uh, you know, what we thought you know, what, what projects we had and, and what we thought qualified. Um, Tim, at that point, maybe you could explain a little bit about Complete Streets and how it tied into this project. And then and then we'll go into actually the project and, uh, and what our expectations are and uh, what the townspeople are going to see. But the, the Shared Streets and Spaces grant program was created uh, as a result of COVID-19. And it really started as a way um, to create space for people to get around, um, to, for social distancing, uh, and to uh, to allow potentially restaurants and other businesses some uh, extra outdoor space in order to successfully conduct uh, conduct business in communities in the Commonwealth. And what the program allowed was for a shared uh, streets program, um, which is to increase weights of uh, rates of walking or biking um, by increasing safety and enabling uh, social distancing outdoor dining and commerce, uh, better busing, which didn't apply to us, and safe routes to school. Um, the, the one caveat to these programs is they had to be quick start. They had to be things that you could get started quickly once the grants war, were awarded. Um, so we're very fortunate that that's what our program qualified for. So what we chose in our application was a uh, an improvement, a uh, temporary improvement, so it would be a four-week pilot program um, to improve the town center, um, to increase walkability, um, uh, bicycling, um, and traffic. Um, and really, the, the traffic control is what allows for the other two parts of the project to occur. Um, and and at, with or as a result of that, even though it's not actually part of this project, um, it may increase our parking options in the center of town um, as a result of some traffic flow changes. Uh, so ultimately we were looking at uh, changing the traffic flow on Carter Street, Woodward Ave, uh, adding temporary sidewalks and bike lanes, uh, and uh, which would, and also adding some benches and some tables uh, to expand some temporary seating areas um, for people to, to enjoy the town center. Um, why did we choose this? Um, so about a year ago, we looked at a project and a grant program for safe routes to school and looked at some ways in improving um, biking and walking to BMS. Um, part of that um, are some of the things that we're looking at with this program, um, some crosswalk signs and some other things. Um, so that tied in. Um, but larger than that, um, a few years ago, um, Central Mass Regional Planning and, and the Planning Board and a few of us embarked on the Complete Streets program. And uh, Complete Streets um, is a program that is to create access for all means of travel on our roadways. And uh, anyone that's familiar with Berlin at all knows that pedestrian safety is definitely an issue for us. Bicycle safety uh, is an issue. And, uh, and so we went through that process. And Tim, is that something you'd like to talk about uh, and explain a little bit about our Complete Streets program and then how that tied in as one of our projects um, here to the center of town? Um, sure. So a number of years ago, <clears throat> probably 2016 or so, maybe 17, the, the state created a program called Community Compact and towns were encouraged to choose some best practices that they could pursue. And in doing so, um, once you completed that process, that made you more eligible for straight grants. So essentially, you were unlocking the door. We chose 
um, Complete Streets, which was a, a product, a template that this essentially the state um, handed out and said, this is one of the options you could choose. And the goal, as you've said, was really to put people in a situation where commercial vehicles, um, regular private vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists, all those could share the road and, and feel safe. Um, and so we completed essentially, a, a, we made a, a commitment, a mission statement as an in initial um, phase that was accepted. Then we went on to a prioritization plan that was completed in 2019. We worked closely with Central Mass on that. And in that part of the project, we looked primarily at the mile square from you know St. Joe's to Highland, back down past the library, over to the school, the town offices. And we we talked initially about, you know, how can we make this whole zone safer for everybody that uses the road network? Um, and then we we expanded out from there with potential projects and we sort of masterminded a 15 to 20 year plan that would include sidewalks that would connect Northbrook Village to the center and things like that. So, I mean, that was the objective. Then the state also had these other programs, which the chief has talked about, Safe Routes to School. Um, there's another one that's related to housing that may get us some money. So. We've looked at a lot of those avenues, but then this opportunity came on. And I remember when Buster Spaulding was police chief years and years and years ago, um, sitting here in the kitchen at the farmhouse with my father talking about, wouldn't it be um, worthwhile to investigate the possibility of making Woodard Avenue and Carter one way? Um, and, you know, so that's come up over time and it continues to make sense. And it was one of the things that we um, talked about in the prioritization plan. So this opportunity with this program um, just gives us a chance to experiment. So it's a good sign. That's all. And I, I think that's, that, that's an important aspect that Tim just mentioned is, is experiment. When you look at some of these expensive uh, road construction projects, um, you don't often have the ability to see if it works first. Um, that you, you could actually, you know, spend a substantial amount of taxpayer money um, to make what you think are going to be improvements. And ultimately, it doesn't work as you thought. Uh, so what this program is, is this allows us four weeks to test to see if this is something that is going to work for the residents uh, of our community. Um, you know, our hope is that that this is going to improve safety. Um, it's going to allow people to get out and be safer when they're out. Um, and then, you know, hopefully some, some added benefits uh, to, uh, to additional parking. Um, one thing, and I can echo, you know, the, the sentiment that, that Tim mentioned about uh, Chief Spaulding. Um, you know, as soon as I got here to Berlin, uh, people brought up that this area, um, one ways, especially Woodward, Woodward Ave. Um, but, you know, one of the areas that we look at and, and we talk about traffic related issues is, is that Carterville area. Um, you know, it's our you know, when you look at single family homes, it's, you know, the most densely populated area of town, um, you know, especially Carter Street, um, you know, to, to Highland Street. And, uh, you know, we, we need to look at some some ways to, to mitigate that traffic, make things safer. And this may be one way to do that. Um, so what I want to do is share my screen and show a map of the project for people um, and explain what this is going to be and ultimately look like. Um, but what, what the pot pilot is, um, and let's see if this comes up. Uh, all right, can we, uh, can we everyone see that? <laughs> see that map that I have? Um, so as, as we talked about, this is um, a, th a three street area, Central Street, Carter Street, and Woodward Ave. And it's only affecting the area between Central Street and, and Walnut Street. Um, I know there's been some discussion and, and I've talked to some neighbors and things about, you know, maybe even a bigger project and considering one way effects in, in a larger scale, um, but that's not, not what this is. Um, so ultimately what would happen here is Carter Street from Central Street um, to just before uh, Walnut to where basically in front of 19 Carter where Woodward Ave comes out um, would be one way um, from Central towards Highland. 
uh, Woodward Ave from the opposite direction from that intersection of Carter to Central Street would then be one way exiting uh, onto Route 62. Um, you can see I have this some blue and yellow lines that are drawn. Um, those blue lines would be temporary sidewalks that would be added. The yellow lines would be temporary uh, bicycle lanes that would be added. Um, and then also, and I, to me, this is one of the biggest parts of the project. Um, the project allowed us to purchase um, flashing crosswalk beacons. So I'm sure many of you have been familiar with the the signs that are kind of stuck in the middle of the road or the sides of the roads at times with, uh, by the highway um, to delineate the crosswalks and warn people of uh, you know, the penalty for uh, you know, not stopping for a pedestrian in the crosswalk. Um, they, they become a nuisance, they get moved out of the way. Um, we actually have received the funding to put, put four um, flashing crosswalk beacons in. So um, those are the signs that the pedestrian would push a button it would activate flashing lights to notify motorists that someone was waiting at the crosswalk to cross. Um, to me, I think, you know, when this project is done and we remove everything else, um, th those are gonna be able to stay. Um, and that, that is a huge safety add um, to, to the center of town. So I'm looking forward uh, to that. Um, and then there's some purple marks on there and, and we were, you know, we put into our grant packet, the ability to add some benches and picnic tables and those things. And those were some potential areas that, that are possibility. Um, obviously, there'd have to be some discussions with the church if they were going to be added on that triangular piece of property. Um, but maybe in front of the library or the bullet house or some other areas to allow people to sit. Um, and that's, that's going to kind of be a fluid uh, process as we purchase those items and, and determine where they're going to be able to be placed. Um, they'll, there's a yeah, white triangle at the intersection of Woodard Ave and Carter Street. And what we will do is to help better delineate this project, um, we'll actually use um, six foot water filled barricades and we'll build a temporary traffic island so that as you're traveling um, on Carter Street uh, towards the center of town, um, you'll be forced to turn onto Woodward Ave. And then um, same as you're coming up Carter Street into Carterville, um, you know, you'll be able to go left or right at the uh, at those barricades where you stay stay to the right if you're going to continue on Carter Street, or you make the left onto Woodward Ave and you exit uh, exit the center of town onto Route 62. Uh, you know, I, I think the beautiful part of this is it's temporary. It's a four week program. If we get two weeks in, and traffic becomes a nightmare, things are very easily movable. Um, you know, our hope is that we're going to be able to get feedback from. Uh, the residents in the center of town and and everyone that passes through to find out and explore if this is a project that we want to look at making permanent and then we would look at other available state funding um, sources in order to make a permanent uh, project as we uh, move forward so is there anyone else um, from the committee that would like to add anything about the uh, the project itself Um, the only thing, um, the only few things that I would like to add is, first of all, uh, many thanks to Ian um, um, at CMRPC for his assistance um, with the application. This was, in fact, a very last minute application, and we were able to get it done um, with his assistance. So um, I know he's not here, but maybe he'll watch the tape. It was incredible. He helped us get this done in less than a week. And it was, uh, it was a lot of moving parts to, to tie together very quickly. Yeah, yeah. so he did, a, he did a great job and, and the group did a great job putting this together. Um, and um, just to touch on the complete streets plan, um, I'm not sure it's online. It might actually be online now. There's, there's got to be a link to it somewhere. Uh, but for anyone who's curious to look at the projects on the, uh, the tier two prioritization plan um, that the town developed, um, when did you say, Tim, back in 2017? or 18 maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but this area, this triangle is definitely a, an area of focus in the prioritization plan. So this pilot project is gonna go a long way um, to helping the town determine whether or not um, these projects can become 
um, long-term projects. And I know there's been interest in sidewalks on Carter and I know Evie's here um, listening to this. So um, this is going to get us one step closer to that. And I think by doing this pilot project, uh, not that it's gonna give us bonus points, but it's really going to be able to give us some insight for a future grant application for Complete Street. So that's all I have to add. All right, excellent. I guess um, now I'd like to hear from uh, anyone in our, our audience that has any questions. Um, you know, I'm sure that there, there may be some questions or concerns about how this may affect people and, uh, and we'd be happy to do our best to answer those. Amy Baudet is being promoted to ask her question. Well, Amy, why don't you go ahead and unmute and you can ask uh, ask your question. Uh, all right, um, this is really exciting. Uh, thank you so much. So I am wondering, um, two part question, what makes, uh, what, what are you doing to make the, the temporary sidewalks? And if it's, if this four week program is successful, does it have to come up in four weeks? <laughs> um, it, it's, it's probably not gonna be the most beautiful thing. So to answer your second question, yes, it would have to come up in four weeks. Um, and then we would look at, at sources of funding to make it permanent. Um, to delineate the sidewalks, there'll be a combination of um, barricades similar to those that are gonna be used to create the traffic islands and uh, paint markings on the, on the asphalt. Great, thanks so much. All right, and Eric, uh, you have a question? Yeah, uh, so I live right at uh, Three Linden Street, which is where uh, Woodward exits on through 62. And uh, I work from home, my wife now works from home, and we sit here and watch traffic uh, a good portion of the day. And I will state that exiting Woodward onto 62 creates uh, quite a lot of contact between pedestrians and uh, vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of people that cross right there and I, I wonder if reversing the direction of that street and leaving Carter a two way would make a whole lot more sense, uh, giving people the option to use the wider street uh, for two way traffic and using Woodward as a, a path to get off of 62 and head up toward Carterville. Uh, up to Carterville. That, yeah, that corner is, uh, is pretty, pretty tough. There's really no visibility there whatsoever. Uh, I will say as we try and exit our driveway uh, people are often looking left as they leave Woodward Avenue, trying to see oncoming traffic, not paying attention to the fact that people, uh, myself and, and uh, our neighbor, uh, our neighbors, Doug and Kathy, when they try and pull out, they're often pinned down because of traffic exiting uh, Woodward that's not paying attention. Um, okay. So I, I'm curious why that, why we pick the directions we pick. Um, so to, to look at the directions, as we looked at it, um, what we were trying to eliminate is that crossing of traffic at, at Woodward and Carter um, so that we would have, as people came down um, from Highland Street onto Carter, um, that, that if people were coming in off of Woodward Ave, there'd be a crossover of traffic there. So we're trying to minimize those contacts. Um, you know, and, and also to your question or your comment about the pedestrian safety, that is one uh, huge concern. And one of my hopes at least is those crossing beacons um, We'll also be able to catch the attention of people exiting Woodward Ave and, and you know, help prevent some problems there with, uh, with pedestrians. Um, I don't have an easy answer on your driveway, um, but that is something that as we go through this pilot, um, we can evaluate. Um, and th that could be one of the things that we get, as, again, as I said, two weeks in, and we're like, this, is, this isn't gonna work. And you know, it might be as simple as flipping the signs to, to try another thing. Tim, did you have something on that? One of the other issues has always been people exiting Carter onto 62 with vehicles parked in front of the meeting house, blocking your view west on 62 and making it difficult for folks to figure out when it's safe for them to turn onto 62 left toward Hudson. And the other part of that equation is that as Lowe's is, whenever Lowe's is busy and people try to back out of Lowe's, well, the, the store now, <laughs> I'm dating myself. 
um, th that ends up with a turning movement that makes that whole network more complex as well. So when we worked with Central Mass on this, it, it became apparent that a turning movement onto Carter going north um, in this first phase anyway was, was worth the experiment. So uh, that's, that's some of the reason we, we looked at that um, configuration at this time. Eric, as we move through this project, um, just stay in touch with me and let me know what you see and how things are. Um, and, and we'll, you know, if we have to make adjustments or, or adjustments make sense, we can work through that. Okay, thank you. I, I have one other quick point uh, I'd like to okay. bring up if it's okay to do so. Uh, yeah. Not specifically regarding traffic flow, but uh, noise in the center of town. Uh, in the 25 mile an hour zone, uh, trucks really, really seem to enjoy using their engine brake uh, for 200 yards as they come down the street. Uh, and it uh, routinely makes it impossible to communicate with people if we're even standing uh, in our driveway. Um, so it would be, uh, it, it would be an ask uh, if, there's a, if there's the possibility of looking into a no engine brake sign. Uh, and possible enforcement around that, if that's an option, I would love to see that. Um, that is an option. We actually have a new uh, sign request form. Um, I'll forward you that, and um, and then we can put it on the agenda for our next meeting. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And Evie. Hi there. Hello. Thank you all for your great work on this. I'm so pleased that this moving along just in time for hopefully for when we open again, full time. Um, so a uh, quick question for the temporary thing. Are we going to redo the parking lines so people know how to park? Because right now people are used to parking on the right on Carter Street where we're now gonna have the bike lane and the sidewalk, which is really great. But could we just put little temporary parking, you know, diagonal like we talked about? Dave's brilliant um, idea. So as part of the pilot, parking is not part of this. So um, parking will still be allowed on both sides of Carter Street, um, but we can't actually put the parking delineation in. Um, you know, part of this project is is um, sending pictures and doing everything back to the state to show them what we've done. Um, so because parking's not part of this actual project, we're not going to be doing that yet. Um, but we're going to look at the effects on the road and that um, the, what space is allowed after we put in this, the temporary bike lane and um, and crosswalk to what will be uh, feasible for parking in the future. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I want to go back to Eric's question about crosswalk because I walk there and the the crosswalk at the end of Woodward is on the is on the 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 west side of Woodward, I think it is. And one of the reasons it's there is as a walker, that's logically how you would go to get over to Town Hall, uh, the municipal building. But but actually, the visibility is better on the east side of Woodward. And I don't know if we contemplated moving that crosswalk. If we had if we had sidewalks on that side of Woodward, if I'm remembering correctly, then it would make sense to continue the crosswalk across 62, a little higher up on the hill and a little more visible. Because uh, Eric's point is a very good one, I think. So we did talk about temporary crosswalks as part of the project, um, but one of the issues we run into is ADA compliance, and we would have to put in a temporary ramp along the curbing on Central yeah. Street. Yeah. And it, it, this, this, the temporary ramps that are available, um, the space wasn't allowable. It would impede the, tra the traffic. So, so we uh, perhaps not, not, a, not in the temporary phase, but maybe as we go forward. But something it. permanent, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and just a, a comment, uh, I as a commuter, you know, the, the, the nine to five kind of commuter, I gave up on the intersection of 62 and Carter about eight years ago. And I used, in the morning, I went out Carter Street to St. Joe's, it was a much safer left turn. Uh, so, uh, you know, what Tim said is uh, it was in, impossible in commuter hours to deal with that intersection. Uh, and, and so I'm very much in favor of the one way in the direction it's in. I think that makes sense. Excellent. 
Margaret. I just wanted to touch on the ADA piece. Um, the ADA uh, components are also noted in the town's um, tier two complete priority plan. And it's there also noted in our new ADA self-assessment and transition plan. So we have a number of plans that are in harmony with the fact that ADA um, accessible measures are gonna have to be made. Um, but as Chief explained, with these temporary measures, which we tried to put in this grant, they just would not work because they wouldn't provide the space needed. Yeah, I, I understand, yep. Okay, do we have uh, any other questions about the project? You should raise your hand if you wanna be called on. All right. Oh. Oh. oh, someone's calling. <laughs> and Peter, uh, if you want to unmute, what is your question? Uh oh, and I just got to notice to plug in my computer. <laughs> uh oh. I'll be right back. I'm going to run and get my plug. <laughs> what happens when you try and take advantage of the nice weather and stay outside? Peter, your mic's open if you want to open up your camera. There you go. And I can hear I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> if you want to ask My question, hair is not that good right now. Don't sweat it. Peter, you can go ahead and ask your question. I can hear you as I'm moving around. <laughs> All right. So my, my question was, in what way will this interfere with uh, traffic flow in 62, these changes, if any, or improve it? Because I think the priority um, probably is to make that, to make 62 continue to flow flow pretty freely. So th there shouldn't be any changes to the flow on Route 62. Um, what we will see is a change in how all the traffic enters Route 62 from Carterville. So um, I don't expect a lot of change. Um, the volume of cars should, should remain the same. They'll just be entering um, all at, at Woodward Ave versus a combination of, of Woodward and Carter. That's it. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions, um, I would just say. I, can I just add, yeah. Can I just add one more thing, please? You probably yes, went through this at the beginning and gone through it too. But another real area of focus here, um, Chief talked about it being um, this program being tied to the COVID pandemic and trying to increase. Um, uh, walkability and um, and and bike and safety for uh, bicyclists and things. Um, we know that our our small businesses in the center of town and around our town have suffered through this pandemic too. So um, another major piece of this is to promote access to the businesses and cultural facilities in our village center. So I just want to reiterate that, um, that that is a, a main goal of this program and the grant application. Okay, thank you. Uh, so one thing I want people to keep in mind is this is just a start. Um, you know, we have started um, larger conversations about the Route 62 corridor as it, um, you know, affects the residents of Berlin. Um, you know, anyone that, that drives through town can see the intersection of Pleasant Street, um, Five Corners, and, and see that as traffic continues to increase, not only just in Berlin, but in the region, um, you know, the problems that we're gonna face. Um, and we need to start to look at ways to fund uh, changes to the roadway to make it safer uh, and more manageable in the future. And projects like this are, are the start um, to get us towards available state funding so that everything doesn't fall on the shoulders of the residential taxpayer. And uh, so, you know, keep in mind that you may see more projects like this as grants become available. We're going to try and take advantage of everything that we can um, in order to lessen the blow as we move forward and we have to make some changes uh, in the future. And as we try to work through the Complete Streets program, there's 30, 30 projects, Tim, that we have on that uh, 
on that first list. So there's a ways to go to, uh, to connect the community and, and make it safer uh, for people to get around using all forms of transportation. So I, I thank everyone. Uh, the other thing I would ask is that you know, we have 11 attendees other than the panelists. Talk to your friends and neighbors, let them know what's going on. There will be sign boards that will be posted around town uh, prior to the project starting uh, to allow people and, and give people notice of the change in, uh, in traffic flow. And, uh, and you know, we're gonna, again, as I said, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, anyone at any point, feel free to reach out to me if they have any questions about the project or concerns as it begins. Um, our hope is that we're gonna have all the product uh, in our hands very soon and that we'll be able to get this done and work through it uh, for basically the month of November. Um, we really don't want to have any of these temporary things in place uh, as the snow flies. So that, we, that could be an impediment to the highway department and snow removal. Just realized- Jessica, do you have a question? I do. When is okay. this starting? Um, so that's it. We, we've ordered um, a lot of the items that we need to get this done. So we're kind of at the whim of our suppliers right now. Um, once we receive everything, um, we'll get the signs out to let people know. Um, but as I said, I, I, we're thinking probably that November, um, four weeks in November, and to hopefully get things up and out of the road before we have any significant snowfall. Thank you. And, and the town is required to provide a final report to MassDOT by December 30th. So this really is a quick launch pilot project. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. So the only other thing that was on our agenda tonight was the approval of minutes and we those to uh, approve from our first meeting. Um, so I would entertain May a motion. May I just yes. before the motion? Sorry, yes. Just one last thing. Um, I, I want to reiterate again that the projects on complete streets and many other state funded um, uh, grant programs require the town to fund pre-engineering and design work. So we can't even apply for complete streets projects unless we have completed pre-engineering and design work on them. So I just want to make that clear because I think that's something the town really needs to start thinking about programmatically funding pre-engineering and design work for small and large infrastructure projects. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, that is a, that is a good point because that's something that we've talked about and, and how we're going to start to build up that funding in order to move forward with any projects in the future. So with yeah, that being finance, said, I, oh, finance, go ahead, Mary. Finance committee, finance committee is noting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so with that, I'd accept a motion to adjourn. Yes, someone? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and uh, we will uh, see you all at our next meeting, hopefully.